Hello everyone, welcome to Installing Realism Overhaul in Kerbal Space Program 1.12.5, the latest and last version of Kerbal Space Program 1. And Realism Overhaul is a set of mods that is built around real fuels and real solar system that is meant to give us realistic engines that will be more suited to use in the actual solar system. Real solar system scales everything up by roughly 10.6 times. And so the stock engines that come with Kerbal Space Program aren't really great for that. They're awful heavy compared to the thrust that they create. So uh, Realism Overhaul converts all the parts so that they're more suited to this larger environment with uh, Kerbin converted to Earth and Moho into Mercury and so forth. All the planets have been changed to the planets that we have in real life. And so in a way, it makes it easier for you to actually play real solar system, but it has a lot of complexity to it. And one of the complexities is installing it. Now, compared to the previous times I've explained installing Realism Overhaul, they've made it easier because of the use of CCAN, though that has some stumbling blocks. But I am going to use the CCAN install even though I could tell you how to install it manually. So that is as simple as possible. And of course, this is the recommended version of the installation process now. So, uh, I will link the CCAN website in the video description. There's a GitHub link. And for Windows, you would be downloading ccan.exe and you have to make sure you have .NET 4.5 installed. Normally your computer will have that. And then for other systems, you will have these options. There's a whole bunch of stuff here, but I will download ccan.exe. So what we're going to do is actually download the ccan.exe into the folder that we are going to use. So this is a clean install of KSB 1.12.5. Uh, no DLC or anything like that right now. And so it's sitting here right there. And let me move all the windows so that you can... Oh, uh, I can't move the other window right now. But it says CCAN requires permission to add a handler for CCAN URLs. Uh, yes, we'll allow CCAN to do that. And there'll be a message from user account control. And do you wish for CCAN to automatically check for updates on startup? That's up to you. I'm going to uh, set this to no uh, for consistency's sake and I'll just manually do it and it's asking permission to connect to the internet through the firewall and so it's uh, updating repositories. Would you like CCAN to refresh the modulus every time it's loaded? Yeah, probably. Okay, so then we have CCAN and it's enormous list of mods here but all we really need is realism overhaul. And it's as simple as clicking Realism Overhaul and installing those things if you don't want a career mode set for Realism Overhaul. So Realism Overhaul will adjust all the parts and suit them to something at the scale of Real Solar System. But it won't include Real Solar System but it could, because it could be used with a different mod that changes all the planets to the same scale but aren't the real planets. So just in case you wanted to do that, uh, Real Solar System is not a requirement for Realism Overhaul. So Realism Overhaul here will give these mods a very modest set of mods. But let me go through them so you know what they are. But it's important to note that if you install these, you will not have a career mode that is meant for Realism Overhaul. It will still be the default career mode, so that will not be suited. But there is a career mode available for Realism Overhaul and Real Solar System, and we'll get to that. So Community Resource Pack has all the new resources. Instead of just the liquid fuel and oxidizer and mod propellant you are used to in the stock system, now it'll have a huge number of potential propellants. And also other resources like food, water, oxygen, and stuff like that. The community Resource Pack manages that. Harmony is a, a community fix kind of thing. And a change log is a separate thing. Modular Flight Integrator is a requirement of Ferrum Aerospace Research, uh, which adjusts the aerodynamics of the system, which actually makes things easier overall. And in another video, I'll explain more about Ferrum Aerospace and how to use it. But Module Manager manages all the patches from all the mods so that they can all work together happily. So basically everything that patches the game requires that. Smoke screen adds effects for your engines and it works with Real Plume down here. If you're using Waterfall, that'll be another way to go. Uh, Realism Overhaul doesn't seem to require Waterfall right now, but you should install Waterfall because that'll add better effects to some engines. Tweak scale improves the ability to adjust the parts to uh, the scales that we need in Realism Overhaul because 
if you just have the default scaling, uh, they might not be big enough or sometimes small enough uh, for the things that you want to do with the adjusted system. Uh, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement makes things stiff so that there's not a whole lot of wobble all over the place. With our huge rockets that we need in the larger scale, this is super important because if you didn't have some sort of auto strut, you could use auto strutting as well, but this is better just so you don't have to auto strut everything. And it makes it so that everything is sensible. Otherwise, at this scale, everything will wobble apart. Uh, real shoots uh, are, is an improvement on parachutes and it'll allow you to configure the parachutes for different planets a little bit easier and make things much more predictable in terms of their behavior. Uh, it's a little bit old as far as this dialogue is concerned and I'll probably talk about that in a different video. Uh, community fixes are community fixes and real heat is for re-entry heating because if you had the stock re-entry heating around Earth, then you're going to be in a bad place as far as uh, your returns are concerned. So real heat improves the heating situation for this scale. Uh, Fair aerospace, as I already explained, changes the aerodynamics and largely makes that better, a little bit less soupy. Uh, the only downside to firm aerospace compared to stock is that you tend to need a higher takeoff speed than you do in stock. But after that, it's much easier to get through the sound barrier. So that's very important. Uh, advanced jet engine uh, improves jet engine modeling and makes the jet engines much more realistic. Uh, huge number of numbers, huge number of numbers. A lot of information goes into the modeling on advanced jet engines. It's a little bit complicated, but it makes your jet engines much nicer. Real plumes are for the effects on the engines. Real fuels uh, takes the stuff from community resource pack and applies it to the engines uh, to some extent. And then realism overhaul does the rest. Uh, so it'll uh, basically realism overhaul is uh, adding more patches based on real fuels in some ways, and also onto the pods so that the pods are the right scale and other parts have the resources that they need. So even more than real fuels, it's adding stuff from re uh, community resource pack into the different parts. Uh, it does a lot of other stuff, but ultimately, uh, well, it's the main mod that makes all this coherent. And so that's realism overhaul. Now, if you wanted a career mode, you wouldn't check realism overhaul. You go this step down here and check realistic progression one. Now, there are a few versions of RP1 around here, and there's even one down here that's a legacy version. So keep that in mind. But we're, we're going to go with this one because the legacy version is pretty old. Uh, I, I, think, I think we're going with this one in this case. I, there was a different install version. I don't think, uh, this, this is the option that I picked for my RP1 series, I'm pretty sure. And when we look at the change set, we get all these extra things. All the other ones that I have not mentioned have to do with what RP1 wants. So this is to support the career mode. Uh, examples will be uh, little part mods like um, there's stock extensions, that's RP1 itself, and Kerbalism. So that's for the realistic uh, uh, life support uh, consumption and communications transmission of science. And parts, parts, uh, click-through blocker, these are all just for uh, toolbar, really. And because we have a lot of mods that create a lot of icons and toolbar might be helpful. Uh, real retractable lifting surfaces required by stock extensions and so forth. A lot of these are just little fiddly bits, <laughs> frankly speaking. Custom barn kit has to do with the buildings and how we upgrade the buildings for career mode. So that's for career mode, but for the install that I'm creating, I'm not looking for career mode. Uh, if you did do that, well, for either option, whether you're installing realism overhaul or realistic progression, you should not install too much more than the requirements. In fact, uh, on the first go, I would say don't install anything more than realistic progression actually says it needs, except for the RSS textures. It'll probably prompt you for that, but this real realistic progression one does require real solar system. And real solar system requires its textures and will probably prompt us if we uh, let's see. Uh, let me just go with real realism overhaul because that's why I'm installing this install. This is for testing airplanes, 
this install. Uh, so it's very focused. It's not for career mode. And so I'm not installing the other stuff. But because Realism Overhaul doesn't include Real Solar System by default, I have to check Real Solar System separately. And you'll see Real Solar System and Real Solar System textures. Double check when you get through the installation process that you do have the textures. Otherwise, you're not going to get Realism Overhaul actually. You're going to have installed the mod, but it won't show up. So we have Realism Overhaul, Real Solar System, and Real Solar System textures. And that, that is what I'm going to install in this first. This is a whole bunch of recommendations. And these recommendations will probably occur for RP1 as well. And so what I would suggest is go ahead and go with all of the recommendations up here, except this is a duplicate. That's the low resolution. And TAC Life Support, you have to pick between Kerbalism and TAC Life Support. Uh, for my purposes, I am going to pick TAC Life Support instead of Kerbalism. Uh, so we've, if you have trouble running the game, Parallax is pretty hefty as far as the visual requirements. So you might want to consider unchecking that. In terms of impact, the things that will make it harder for you to run the game are the higher RSS textures. That's why we had back there different texture packs that are less severe. I picked the highest textures, highest quality textures, but that is because I have 64 gigabytes of RAM. If you have less RAM, you'll want the lower texture packs. Uh, sorry about that, but that's how it is. Similarly, uh, RSS visual enhancements will have a big impact on whether you can run the game or not, and it'll be highly dependent on your RAM, your system RAM, not the visual RAM, though visual RAM is somewhat you near know, on the GPU, but uh, mainly it's the system RAM. And so if you have low system RAM, you'll need the low resolution of that, and that will be uh, adding the clouds and stuff like that. Uh, otherwise, most of this is not too big a deal. RO loading images is up to you. Waterfall is pretty harmless and helpful. And MechJeb, very useful. Procedural fairings, procedural parts, very standard. Real antennas, it depends on whether you want that. Uh, I'm doing planes in this install, so I'm not going to be doing real antennas. Uh, but that is for realistic communications. And that I would suggest more for the RP1 side of things. The suggestions you should leave out initially. So first, we make sure that the game runs with the stuff that we have. And if your game doesn't run, if it hangs up on starting the game, then you need to go with a lower resolution on the RSS textures or RSS visual enhancements or something like that, or maybe Parallax. So Parallax has its own relationships with stuff and it'll require a scatterer and all that will be automatically, Copernicus will be automatically installed by Real Solar System as well. And so there's a lot of stuff that's going to, so I'm gonna go continue. And uh, it depends on what you want. This one will deal with the mods more slowly, but with a smaller uh, slow, smaller download. And then this is better threaded. Now I'll go with a smaller download, it's fine. Let's try that, it's cached anyway. Scatterer wants a sun flare, and we have to choose one. They all have, quite, uh, let's just go with the lower impact one for now. I think the others are for space. So now it will install all the things. And this will include the requirements that you did not explicitly check. So for instance, uh, I said Parallax has a big impact, and Parallax looked like it was only a four megabyte mod, but Parallax's impact is mainly from these textures that I didn't even tell you about, 1.1 gigabyte and 1.8 gigabyte. And so that's three gigabytes that are trying to get into RAM. So if you have a problem loading the game, you will want to uncheck Parallax because that is a huge thing. In fact, that should be first before you reduce the RSS textures or RSS visual enhancements. Uncheck Parallax first if you have a problem. Anyway, it's gonna take some time, even at this download speed, to get everything, so I'll come back to you when it's done. Okay, so now we have a standard installation of Realism Overhaul, except we have TacLife support instead of Kerbalism, 
And it used to be Tack Life Support was the main life support mod, but it has changed to Kerbalism. So we'll have that modification in mind, but otherwise this is a basic install of Realism Overhaul. And I need to emphasize that even though all these mods will be very tempting and you might know that you want them, but first, let's see if the game actually runs. Uh, just don't do it. Don't install all the other things yet. Uh, just check if it runs with the basic installation and going forward if I say something requires realism overhaul I mean the mods that we have just installed and nothing else and if I think uh, Something requires more stuff then I'll say so so these are the things we have in here Click through blocker harmony KSP burst textures unlimited got installed by something or another uh, again, there were a lot of requirements that it didn't tell us explicitly about that it's dumped in here. Advanced jet engines, procedural wings, community resource pack, uh, engine group controller, environmental visual enhancements for R RSS visual enhancements, firmware space, hangar extender, uh, Kerbal change log, KJR, uh, Copernicus for real solar system among other things, KSC switcher, KSC the community fixes, Mechcheb 2, modular flight integrator, parallax. Again, uh, this might be a problem thing if you have low resources because it's got four gigabytes worth of textures. Uh, procedural fairings, procedural parts, RCS build aid, real shoots, real fuels, real heat, realism overhaul, uh, real plumes, RSS, uh, repo soft tech. I always forget what that's about. Uh, RO loading images, that's up to you. RSS date time, RSS textures. So second to parallax, RSS, uh, real solar system textures, 3.74 gigabytes. You might want to tone that down if you don't have enough RAM. Basically, all this goes directly into RAM once we start the game. So if you're talking about four gigabytes, that's four gigabytes of RAM you're looking at and so forth. RSS visual enhancements is the third biggest impact. No, it's not that big here. So I think I've got a more intense version in some other installs. Scatterer, smoke screen, solver engines, the squad folder, <laughs> the, the original, uh, attack life support, and waterfall. So that is all we've got. And one other thing I like to do uh, before continuing is to uh, add the settings file from a different install so that I don't have to set up my joystick and everything. But other than that, I'm going to let Seacan launch the game. So we're gonna click that, and let's see how it goes. Okay, so Community Fixes can cache converted PNG textures on this to speed up loading time. I don't care about the loading time. I've got an SSD, nine seconds doesn't matter. Uh, so no, it doesn't matter to me. We're loading a whole bunch of stuff, though not that much stuff. 10,000 module manager patches is not too much. This is fairly mild compared to what we're eventually going to get up to. And I'll talk about installing different sets of mods for different purposes in later videos. But for now, this is just a video on installing Realism Overhaul itself. And while this is going on, uh, we do want to keep an eye on that RAM that it is taking up, right? Because that's the critical thing. So uh, we will see. I've got but my, my Python is using quite a lot. I'll have to check that out. Anyway, I was doing some other stuff before. Uh, so yeah, we can see KSP is using an increasing amount of memory in uh, Task Manager. And if you're not sure about how to bring up Task Manager, it is uh, right-clicking on your toolbar at the bottom and then there's a task manager option and you can see as the mods load it grows but right now the mods that we have installed should not be well let's see <laughs> it peaked at about 10 gigabytes there 11 12 12-ish 12 12-ish 12 the game has loaded so 12-ish gigabytes. Now what happens when you don't have enough gigabytes? Well, what happens is the system is going to, instead of putting stuff in the RAM, we'll put it onto the swap file on your hard disk. And that slows things down because your hard disk is, or SSD, wherever your swap file is, is much slower than the RAM. So if you find that you have the game running really slowly, 
it might be because you don't have enough RAM or it might just quit all together if you don't have your swap file configured properly so that it can take all the extra that Kerbal needs to give to it. Uh, the textures look pretty good back there, but I don't see the clouds yet. Let's make sure we have clouds with RSS visual enhancements. I don't have a game, so let's just start a new sandbox game. There's got to be click-through blocker. I don't really care either way, to be honest, but... All right, hide this window at startup. Okay, then we're all set. And let's time warp a little bit to see how things look. Ah, too quick. Custom skybox might be a thing to add. Right now, the skybox is going to be pretty bland. I'll probably copy uh, one that I've been using for a long, long time from a different install. And that was Teflon Mike's skybox for texture replacer. And, you know, our ground textures, we probably want RSS uh, Cape Canaveral or something like that. And we ch checked a tracking station to see all of our other locations. So uh, this is brought about by KSP, KSC Switcher. KSC Switcher gives us all the different launch sites. And we see clouds on this and everything is happy. So again, but it's taking up 12 gigabytes of RAM. So it's a good thing that we didn't... Uh, load up on all the other mods just yet before we see the impact that we already have and so that's why I say don't install a whole bunch of mods up front and maybe skip parallax I'm installing parallax because I am doing planes and so we're gonna be pretty low on uh, to the ground and we're going to want the nice scatter there if possible if it actually shows up in realism overhaul these days uh, but yes, what you'll notice is right now we have all the stock engines and stuff like that, but they've been modified by Realism Overhaul so that they use more interesting things like this. Uh, this engine now uses AK27 and Tonka 250. Now I'm going to talk about how to make a rocket with this stuff in a different video, but right now we have a functioning version of Realism Overhaul and I'll save that for later. Uh, now, as far as what other mods you might want to add now that you've got a stable install of Realism Overhaul, it depends on what you want to do with it. Like, this is a plane install, so I'm going to be installing a lot of plane mods. What I'm not going to be doing is installing a lot of replica rockets. So you have to think about what exactly you want to do with the install in order to figure out what mods you want, and don't just dump everything in there. Uh, I, so I have many different installs of KSP for different purposes and you can do that because KSP doesn't dump anything into the system registry and you can create as many installs of it as you want and it'll be the same process and you'll have a different CCAN in each one and it'll all be perfect. So anyway, uh, we'll do more with this install. With, I won't add anything to it. In the next video I'm going to talk about making rockets with just what we have here. Uh, just as an example for uh, beginners to Realism Overhaul, so that's not too overwhelming uh, because once we add other mods, we're going to have a lot of other parts and it's got to be even more overwhelming to sort through them. So I've done this before in previous versions of Kerbal Space Program, but it's worth doing again in this version to see what might have changed, and I'll do that in a subsequent video. So anyway, hopefully you guys all have a working version of Realism Overhaul, and if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments. With that, I'll say thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.